the podcast no one asked for, but you want it anyway. It's the Bits and Pieces Podcast. Well, we're back, everybody. It is indeed another episode of the Bits and Pieces podcast. Uh, Jess really thinks it's funny. I just think how, how laissez-faire, like, we're back. We haven't done a podcast in a year. No, no, that's not true. How long? We, we did, did one, one in, in May. May. Yeah. We did one in May. Joey Molinaro joined us, but that was oh. our only other one this year. It really was? Yes, because when I went back to do the, a sheet for this one, mm-hmm. it was... I didn't do a sheet for Joey's because we were just talking about race and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, the Indianapolis 500 race. Oh, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the previous one I had done was the Christmas one a year ago of okay. the podcast. So uh, joining us over there with the deep voice and the gorgeous beard is Jeff Oske. Hi, That's Jeff. Right. Hi, thanks for having me, everybody. Yeah, glad that you join us. We have uh, Jessica Alsman as well, apparently Hello. needing some makeup on or something and put the wrong one on. She put the wrong makeup on, Jeff. She she the girls have different color foundation and concealer, and I put on the When I'm Tan mm. foundation or whatever, so then my whole mouth area and nose was just like a brown circle. It didn't match, so <laughs> sorry. I tried. <laughs> I didn't notice it. From girl to girl, I think you're okay. Yeah, you're fine. That's something a girl might tell another girl, though, so she looks bad. <laughs> I, In my head, I'm thinking that. I don't I, trust anybody. Always thinking worse. Yes, we I know. know. I'm I not know. that girl, but <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> and my, my girl, my girl Jessie's here. All, uh, you've had uh, you've been doing the uh, beanie a lot lately. Been the, uh, not washing my hair a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it looks good. <laughs> Thanks. I'm getting all the colors. Yeah. This is my holiday. I went with the bright green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I like it. Thanks. I like it. Alsman's wearing her big hoodie. I think uh, her and Donnie could fit in there. That's right. Mm-hmm. Not that Donnie. No, not that Donnie. The other Donnie. We are going to celebrate uh, Ron Sexton this episode, as well as uh, play a few Christmas bits of his that he did as uh, Donnie Baker. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been about five months. It's it's been a little weird, uh, I would say, from my perspective, because. Uh, for those who didn't know, Ron did not live here with us in the nearby area for quite a few years. About 10 years, yeah. Uh, actually, maybe 12. Oh, really? It's been a while. Yeah. And But every couple months, he would show up. Sometimes we didn't know he was in town. And all of a sudden, he would turn the corner and he'd say hey to me. And, and full disclosure, he and I have always were always working on the next Donnie Baker album. So he and I were in contact quite a bit. And, you know, he would text, hey, that was a good call today, yada, yada, yada. So it's been five months, and I'm still kind of waiting for him to turn the corner and and see him. Uh, Unfortunately, he will not be doing that, but I find myself, um, yeah, kind of bummed at times when I realize that's not going to happen. But the beautiful thing is he did, he had a hell of a um, run with his characters and his call-ins, and um, I mean, dare I say it's cliche, but they'll they'll live forever for us anyway, so... Um, so we'll we'll uh, have a little joy with with some of those bits today. I didn't anticipate. I didn't. I didn't. I knew we were going to talk about Donnie today. Donnie, we were going to talk about Ron today. But when you just said it like that, yeah. When you don't hear his voice every day, regardless if you don't see him every day, we heard him every day. He was a part of our everyday lives. And I know he was a part of your guys, the listeners. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you worked with Ron on an album. That's just like, that's an evolving thing that happens throughout the year. But Jeffy wrote for Ron every day. Mm -hmm. And so I can't imagine the absence that that has left, not only as a friend, but... You know, as a as a uh, creative partner, like that's just we see each other every day, and I think we take it for van- granted how much we are a part of each other's families. Like when we say Bob and Tom family, like that's not a joke. Like it is, it is <laughs> as dysfunctional as it is. It is our family, and um, when one of our key players isn't here anymore, it's um, yeah. There's a void. There's it a sucks. huge void. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why the show doesn't constantly bring him up and play Donnie stuff. Because imagine how the people in the room feel. If, exactly. Like, you can't, like, no one's forgetting about him. I feel like there's been a lot of random, not the people listening to this, but you're beautiful people. Mm-hmm. But there are people that just like to be like, you guys are forgetting about him. Oh, We're, hell no. We think no about him is. all the time. It's just, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and um, 
And Osman, you you dealt with him professionally is because he did a lot of spots for you. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of background like, hey, stuff that people, the people oh, didn't yeah. realize Donnie happened. Donnie Baker would also yeah. do commercials for clients. And again, no yeah. one can do a commercial like him because he could get away with saying yeah. anything. <laughs> anything. Yeah. And yeah. 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 That's even true. when I would try to, I would try to write a script for him and I end up doing like, you can't write like, and I don't know how, I'd have to go to Jeff a lot. Like, what would Donnie say in this situation? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but, like, whenever I do, it's, like, you're in the voice. You're trying to do, like, the imitating him. And mm. I'm, like, I have no idea where to go. So I'd put in parentheses, like, just do something about this. And it said he'd do something completely off the wall. And I'm, like, never mind. That was way better. Way you're better. the <laughs> genius. Thank you for knowing. But, like, no. it was He was always great to work with. And he was so kind. Like, never a diva. I've worked mm -hmm. with local people that could be divas. And it's, like, mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. Not these people. Other local people. Right, right, But, you right. know, it's, like, gosh, dang. Yeah. This, he was one of a kind. Good dude. Yeah, and uh, somewhat spoiler alert, there could be another, one more album coming out next year. That's and exciting. And it's not just a Donnie thing. It's sort of just celebrating Ron and all he did. Of course, Donnie was his flagship character, if you would. Yeah. Um, but if you saw my tweet back in probably late July, early August, I kind of did a list of all the things that he did do. Because uh, he was more than Donnie Baker. Um, so I'm going to try to find and go through the archives and put together a fun little hour plus of, um, of a, a few Donnies for sure. But, you know, the Floyds, the Kinneys. I mean, the, the he, he had little eras of just, he did this, you know, uh, Tommy Lee Jones would call in. Yeah. You know, yeah. there was a time, the mm -hmm. Robert Devane, do you remember him? The guy who, <laughs> who, who did gold and he'd always, he'd always exit the call with a, with a, with a, with a plane flying away. <laughs> it's just this, just These wild, kinda, weird stuff. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to use it for two reasons to kind of, I don't know, maybe some closure for me. Um, and enjoy the full, the full Ron talent that he had. Um, so hopefully uh, next year sometime, hopefully before the summer, I'll uh, put that together. I'm putting it together for myself, but also for his family. Um, yeah. Because his kids, you know, they lived in Florida, as I said, uh, not here. They lived down in Florida. And his kids knew of Donnie Baker, but they didn't really hear, get to hear the show much. So yeah. they don't really know what all Ron did. Obviously, we do. Right. Uh, and the listeners kind of do, and they appreciate that. So I'm kind of doing it for everybody. And his kids are currently running his website, DonnieBaker.com, and they have um, some tribute merchandise items. If you're interested, go to DonnieBaker.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, let's uh, let's just hit it right now. We um, we actually have our holiday party this Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just we just found out about that, and there's an awkward poster out there. Actually, there's one right behind Jess. I love it. With uh, Tom as the uh, as his puppet. What is that? What is that though? Like you know how you're like everybody's dad has that thing that they do that you're like, Dad, why do you do that? It's not necessary, but it brings them so much joy. And that's how Tom is with these posters. <laughs> he and loves the them. And the puppets. He loves them so much. I was walking in this morning and he was putting three posters in the lobby. Our lobby's not that big. But he was out there with the scotch tape yeah. hanging up the posters and he could not have been happier. And I was so happy to see him happy. <laughs> he, that's did, he did one poster for every person in the building. <laughs> Well, we're probably going to take one home. They're all right here. Yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. So um, so we can maybe talk about holiday party uh, horror stories after Ooh. this if you want. Um, but right now, here's uh, Donnie Baker with his holiday party tips. Hey, Bob and Tom. It's Donnie Baker, man. Heard you guys talking about your office holiday party. Man, if your party's anything like ours, it sucks. I swear to God it does, because our company's like every other company in the world now. Too careful, afraid of getting sued, and passing out drink tickets. Goodbye to the open bar. <laughs> man, I'm so sick of drink tickets, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get around it. Number one, <laughs> man, stop at a Chuck E. Cheese or something before you go to your party. Oh. They're going to pass out drink tickets, you're going to bring your own. Play some ski ball, some pop a shot, or if little kids ain't paying attention, take their tickets. The exchange rate at Chuck E. Cheese is amazing. I mean, for like 25 tickets, you get a plastic set of vampire teeth. No. But at your party, that's like a 12-pack. <laughs> I swear to God it is. They have to take those tickets. State law. Here's another tip. Uh -huh. B-Y-O-B-B. -B. That's right, man. Bring your own beer bong. Oh. Man, there's nothing more rude than sharing your toys with people you don't know or don't like anyways. <laughs> yeah. And sharing your beer bong spreads germs. Mm -hmm. I swear to God it does. 
I got the flu last year, man. And I know it was you, Jamie, because you carry more pus than a caterpillar. Oh. I'll say it right to your face. Oh. Here's another tip. Run a 50-50. Walk around the party with the mason jar and take collections for a raffle. If someone asks what you're doing, just say your boss approved it. Nobody's going to have the balls to ask him anyways. Mm -hmm. By the end of the night, everybody's so drunk, they won't even remember you had a raffle. <laughs> You'll turn your 50-50 into a 100% commission. Wow. I made four grand at our holiday party last year. Hello. I swear to God I did. Then lost it all on a riverboat two days later. <laughs> circle of life. Oh, and never dress up. Man, everybody makes this mistake. Your bosses will notice. I swear to God they will. They'll figure if you can afford Nikes, they might be paying you too much. <laughs> Hell, I wear work boots and a white snake sweatshirt every year. Uh -huh. I don't get a raise, but they don't cut my pay neither. <laughs> also, man, never drive a car to your holiday party. Oh. Be smart. Rent a van. It's cheaper than getting a last-second hotel room. And you know you're going to use it. Heck, even if you don't use it, rent it out your buddies. Man, I get cramped in cars anymore. And last year, Betty from accounting almost kicked out my windshield. Ooh. Get a van. There's more headroom. That way you can stand up. And if you're like me, use the rearview mirror to check your work once in a while. Uh -huh. And last but not least, bring a camera. It's oh. a holiday party. I mean, especially if your company is one of those few that has an open bar, you're going to be set for life. This ain't for keeping a scrapbook, man. It's for the gift that keeps on giving blackmail. <laughs> I swear to God it works. Blackmail. Uh, and how bionic is that, Randy? Turns out that's exactly what your picture featured anyways. <laughs> I thought you said Ramon was Puerto Rican, Randy. Randy's got jungle favors. Can you take that picture, Donnie? No, give me next Saturday off. Oh, I want boy. that picture. That ain't yours. Yes, it is. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. <laughs> give me next weekend off. Give me that picture, man. ain't yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, was was one of his favorite numbers four grand? Like, everything he did, he made four grand. Yeah. Like, four grand, I don't, inflation or not, that's a lot of money sitting in, in a, a redneck's pocket, right? Yeah. One of my favorites, and I think he just started doing it in the last year or two, was when he goes, uh, he goes I'll bet you 50, uh, 20... Uh, Twelve dollars. <laughs> like, like he realized how much money he had on him. Okay. And he was making way too big of a bet. Right, right, I right. Thousand fifty, uh, fourteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I love good. it. I love it. I love it. He, uh, the the drink ticket thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm not a drinker, so we'd get drink tickets, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, you know, towards the end of the night, I'm like, all right, who's needing drink tickets mm -hmm. at one of these bits? Because we Did used you to sell some, them. Uh, I would never sell oh. them. No. <laughs> no, he would just he would just lord over the place. Right. Who yes. shall I? Yeah. Well, we haven't had a big Christmas tickets. party here that had. That. Yeah. I when mean, was the last time we had like a like a true office Christmas party to where there's probably legalities involved yeah like we could have i wasn't here when the mingling of this side and the other side if that makes sense the big big one right there was some that were tame that were hosted by the station when i well, was well yeah, and that was yeah. my, got my like early a, days yeah. there were some pretty wild ones back there yeah yeah, yeah. the yeah. ones we used to have at the country club yeah, yeah. i remember a couple cool uh casino nights did yes. you ever go to the casino yeah. nights and they dude, they had great prizes too yeah, it and it was kind of cool because we because we you're basically gathering money yeah. like play money to then buy tickets for the big prizes yeah. and Eventually, the dealers are like, "Oh, you hit! You're go and you're just winning everything." Mm -hmm. It was the best <laughs> casino ever. Did you ever see any fights at the ones you? Went um, to? I, I've heard of the shoe getting thrown or right. something. I think I witnessed that. Some of them that chick talk about on the air, I did not witness. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Like thrown of a like a. There was a, a rock splash thrown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't witness those, mm -hmm. which I'm using that around those people. Mm -hmm. If you will you know the fighters yeah at uh, the very first christmas party i was here i was an intern which i don't not only do we not invite interns we're not allowed to have interns anymore <laughs> so it was at crackers comedy club that was the very first oh, okay, one the yeah. one in broad ripple and oh my god who performed oh um, is that the roy wood jr that no, that would have been two thousand and two. Okay, maybe I don't know. I don't think that was Roy, was it? Yeah, I remember. I don't remember what the years of the, but we had a, quite a few there for a while. Yeah, and it was a packed house. It was. Everybody was Cause, there because people were bringing their significant others or just girlfriends and who. Yeah. yeah, some of those. And people they wanted to impress. And yes. Yes. And yes. That, yeah. A, Got lot a, little, uh, <laughs> a lot of overflow. A lot of overflow. Yeah. 
Um, but no, I, I, Chris, I enjoy the Christmas party. I do. Even even Monday will, will be pretty low key for us. But yeah, the Christmas party versus the Christmas luncheon are two very different yes, events. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I get hammered at both. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Uber and I'm on my Talk day. about BYO <laughs> beer bong. Yeah. yeah. Jeff used to work for a brokerage firm. Did they ever have good Christmas parties? Uh, no, but uh, the building I worked in housed a, uh, a salon. Yeah. Oh. And I got invited to their Christmas oh. parties and whoa. Yep. A like, salon? Yes. Yeah. I walked in a room. I was like, oh, I don't want to be in this house right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to jail. <laughs> left. Okay, well, it wasn't like that, but I know that Eddie's wife used to throw iconic Christmas parties for her salon. Really? Christine did. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, I had two girls that I went parties. to high school with that worked for her, and that was the party to be at. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Was Eddie the bartender? I don't think. I bet Eddie. Eddie was probably like switching out plates and and electrical <laughs> sockets and his light bulbs. Or I mean, maybe playing slap in the oh, bass that's true. or he something. Could've, he mm. could have been jingle bells. Yeah, his band. Maybe his band was mm-hmm. there. I don't know. I've only seen Eddie play once on stage. Yeah. Yeah, and that might have been at a Christmas party at the at an old little place. Um, him and Michael Young. Michael yeah. Young. Used to be with us. Uh, he uh, he was singing a Led Zeppelin song or something. I only yeah. saw Eddie play when him and I think him and Jimbo was towards the end of them being roommates, and okay. I was over oh, at Jimbo's wow. house. Yeah, and and Eddie was playing there. I uh, saw this Eddie is so obscure. Played the Vogue. <gasps> really? Did you really? Yeah, oh it was God. in the uh, memorial service for Deuce. Oh, okay. So he was up oh, there wow. playing. Yeah, Deuce was a, he was a DJ on one of our sister stations here in the building. Mm -hmm. And that's right. Yeah, I didn't go to that, but you did. Yes. I sure did. And Eddie play, do you remember what he was playing? I don't know, the bass. Like what songs? Okay. Uh, Yeah. I think it was a bass. So he was playing bass. Okay. But I was like, woohoo, I know him. Taking a photo. Eddie can do it all. And by the way, we're not just supposed to say Eddie. We're supposed to play, say, employee Ed- of the year, Eddie. Oh, I was going original OG Eddie, which was Eddie, Eddie with Van- the sexy eyes. Oh, or sexy oh. Eddie, Eddie Van yes. Hazel, they were calling. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I always, I was introduced to him as Eddie with the sexy eyes. Do not look directly in his eyes, you'll fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a video of an old Christmas party from here oh. a couple weeks ago, and really? Eddie did not have a shirt on. <gasps> Stop and it. Eddie. And he was a good looking dude. He looks horrible now. But, oh my God. Back in the day. He had hair. Oh my God. He was a gorgeous man. He is a good looking and, and man. That, and he that was, fell off hard. <laughs> yeah. And that was the bit these girls got enamored with him. Yes. And, yeah. and because he is completely like just could not be more uninterested in any woman in that way other than his wife. Like, he right. loves Christine. Mm-hmm. And so women, like, the worst kind of women are more drawn to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll break him. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can get him. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, well, our next bit is a, it's a Christmas letter to the Bob and Tom show. So do you all ever remember doing, writing a Christmas letter to Santa? Yeah. It's, it's kind of... It's one of those iconic stories that was so traumatic that we don't retell it. Um, but I, I kind of wrote one that said, "Can you? Can I go with you when you come and bring my presents?" Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, don't give me anything. Just can you just take pick me, me up? Yeah, I'll be in the front yard. So, like just when you swing through, I'm just gonna. So let me let me set the scenario yeah. here. You write this letter, put it in an envelope. Oh, no, I, I I hit it. Like, I thought, like, man, Santa just knows. Like, I'm not yeah. putting it out there. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to put this out there and get my ass beat the night before Christmas, okay? Like, I'm smarter than that. <laughs> okay, okay. And so it was, but my mom eventually found it. Oh, I was okay. going to say, that was a smart thing. You're like, no, 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 he's magical. He'll find it. Oh, no, yeah, no, I, I know how to navigate it. And, uh, yeah, didn't, but still did not hide it well enough. And how was the reaction? To not, this? not good. <laughs> it, but it was, it was suspended until the day after Christmas. Well, so, that was nice. Yeah. Oh, so she saw so a pre. Nice. Co- yeah. She did see a pre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was good. Santa was like, "Look, I can't. <laughs> sorry, I can't. She's gonna beat my ass." <laughs> but that was yeah, exactly. That was kind of the year I stopped believing. Okay. Oh. Yeah, right. Santa's like, "Have you met your mom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> I can't have that on my record. Yeah. Oh my gosh." <laughs> 
So, so I, so similarly, I, I envision you going to the mall to sit on Santa's lap, sure. and you're like, "Oh, little girl, what would you like?" And yeah. you're, you kind of say, you know, Barbie or something. You kind of lean into yeah. his, to whisper into his ear, yeah. "Please take me." Can you just? Oh, forget? geez. Yeah. Can you please? Not just that forget? way. No, no. That yeah. Santa went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there is a lot of Santas in jail if we yeah. think about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Alzman? Did you uh, write any letters to Santa? Oh, probably. I was like, I want toys and candy. Mm -hmm. Please, thank you. Always candy with you. I got my Donnie Dew here, my Donnie Baker Mountain Dew. Actually, mm -hmm. it's... Yeah. There you go. There what, you go. Wait, what do you have to... What did he... What was the... The Hillbilly Jaeger bomb? Was it Mountain Dew and... Um, Fireball. And Fireball? PBR? Oh, it, or not PBR. Uh, just Bud Light, maybe? Oh, Bud crap. Light? I doubt it was Oh, my Bud God. Light. It was a beer. Yeah, it was, it was just a beer. It's probably whatever she, beer he uh, had crap, at the club. But it was like, yeah. they always asked for the same ones. Because I talked to someone, they were talking about Donnie's writer, and yeah. he was so easy to work oh, with. It's it was, like, yeah. I just okay. need this and this. Yeah, that was, that's, and it was, it was the, just a cheap beer, I think, oh, whatever crap. it was. I'm going to uh, kick my ass. The fireball was more backstage. Yeah. Yeah. Was it PBR or was it Natty? I feel like it was one of the Miller lesser. Lights? Yeah. Lower, yeah, not the big, you know. Uh, nope. Yeah. But I, who knows? It'll be I, I, mom. I know. Yeah. Right in your Wonderful. face. Wonderful. Right in your face. Uh, Jeff, what about you and Santa? What kind of relationship did you have with oh, him? Oh, man, I I have a 10-minute bit about it. <laughs> I won't go into it. Uh, I, I, I didn't like Santa because uh, what I asked him for, I did not get. Mm. And so I uh, ended up throwing a fit that Christmas that Santa dicked me over. Oh. And uh, that's why I did not do Santa Claus with my kid because mm. I didn't, I wanted him to know where Stiff came from yeah. and I wanted him to appreciate it. You wanted the credit, didn't you? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. I was landscaping. <laughs> That's hard work. I want him to know where it comes from. Do you know yeah. how many pounds of mulch I laid down yeah. for this? Yeah. Well, no. Uh, long story short, I wanted a uh, Haro trick bike, which you probably oh, yeah. remember. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, back when I was younger, uh, kids would ride BMX trick bikes. Okay. And all my friends in the neighborhood had really nice bikes, and I didn't. And so I asked for it, and I wrote to Santa and cut out pictures. I was good all year. And then I came down, and the bike I wanted wasn't there. Instead, it was this big blue bike with a yellow banana seat. Oh, <laughs> no. Ape hangers. Straight uh, from Kmart. And Oh, no. That would have been great. Uh, <laughs> my parents were poor. And come to find out, after I kicked the bike over and went upstairs and cried for the next three hours, <laughs> that uh, I found out later on, uh, my dad had built that bike <gasps> because they didn't have the money to buy me a bike. So he stayed after work for like three months. No way. He bent the frame. He painted the frame. He stayed. Stitched, Welded it and everything. He stitched the banana seat. Wow. He he made the fringe on the Jeff. on the stuff, and I kicked all of his hard work over. Okay. Because, well, well, they buried the lead. They should have opened with well, that. Well, the thing was, <laughs> I I thought Santa had dicked me over because oh. and had my parents been honest with me, yeah, about yeah. where stuff came from, yeah. I would have lied to That's them and true. tell them I like that piece of crap. Yeah, but exactly. But because they didn't, oh. you're a horrible. Child. Yes. So oh, no. that's my that's amazing. That's, all right. that's amazing. Yeah. Aww. But you I still hate that bike. <laughs> is it, is it you, still you around? It? It's still Somebody hanging up it? on my dad's wall. Well, parts of it yeah. are hanging up in my dad's. Yeah, garage. people collect those. People our age collect those bikes now. Yeah, yeah. time to find out. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Yeah, he hand painted the bike. No he way. bent the frame. He welded it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's but did you eventually like fall in love with that bike once you started riding it? No. I wanted a trick bike. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's like, that's like, oh, did you fall in love with the, you know, gremlin that your parents got you after you asked for a Maserati? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just mm, dealt with it. No. But it helped you as a parent because if your child right. ever, like, reacted, you're like, okay, it's okay. I did this too. He doesn't understand or, No, you know. I'm dead serious. I did not do Santa yeah. with my kid. Yeah. And he thought I was lying. He's like, so the kids at school right. are all, and I go, yeah, their parents are all liars. Yeah. He's like, I don't believe you. Oh, man, I couldn't do that. I'm like, well, we're Jewish for now. Um, <laughs> Anything to not But I tell you what, that's a one, you're playing the long game as a parent because mm -hmm. eventually he finds out something and then he's like, oh, my dad's been telling me the truth 
all right. this time. Well, one time I got mad because we got out and the horrible double we lived in, the chimney was falling apart. And so there were bricks on the roof. And he goes, hey, I think Santa broke our chimney. I go, there's not a Santa. <gasps> oh, that's how it just came I out. I go, I told you, I've told you 50 oh, times yeah. there's not a Santa. And he goes, no, he did that. <laughs> he just, he wasn't going to, he, he refused to believe Bless that there wasn't heart. a Santa. Yeah. We never, we just never mentioned it. Like when other people were like, oh, I was threatened with Santa Claus. Like my mom was the all cancel Christmas uh -huh. mom, right? Okay. And so always. And so I was just like, we just never like, this is Christmas and there's people dressed up like Santa Claus and like, it's not a, we just never they just, it wasn't a thing. Yeah. But it also wasn't not a thing. Like, right. it was just, okay, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I had a little sister, so I think I, at the time, I was a good brother. Oh, yeah. When you're younger, and I think I just let it be and right, right, let right. her have right. it. And Idiot. It, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I also, though, from a young age, I was very... Um, Oh, my God. I never understood why Santa brought my rich friends right. way better presents than I got. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was, You're I too always attentive found to that. believe. Oh, yeah. I was like, hey, he got a whole Nintendo. Right? I, I, got a, I got a Commodore 64. That like, kid, and that kid's a dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's been a jerk all year, and yeah. he got the best stuff. Like, what's up, Santa? Come on. All right. Well, let's see what uh, Donnie Baker has to say uh, to the Bob and Tom show here. Hello. We here at the Bob and Tom Show received a letter that we'd like to share with you. And so, in the spirit of the season, here it is. From a little eight-year-old Virginia Hanlon. <laughs> Dear Bob and Tom Show, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says, if you hear it on the Bob and Tom Show... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> so, please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Signed, Virginia O'Hanlon. Dear Virginia, your little friends are wrong. If I were you, I'd stand up and tell them right to their face. Think about it. These are probably the same kids who like to sit in the front of the bus anyways. They probably only believe in things that they can see. That's just crazy to me, man. I mean, think about it. I can't see my own butt, but does it exist? Yes, Virginia. And there is a Santa Claus. I swear to God there is. He exists as much as all the other real heroes, man, like Gene Sammons, Evil Knievel, and Hulk Hogan. Some people don't believe in fairies. Do they exist? Of course, man. Heck, I went to school with one, and I seen him at the mall last week, and he still wears a fanny pack. Look it up. So tell your friends to be quiet about it, Virginia. Plus, I got proof about Santa Claus anyways. When I was 12, man, I left him a full bag of Funyuns. When I woke up the next morning, the whole thing was gone. And ask your loser friends that if Santa don't exist and explain who all the midgets at the North Pole are working for anyways. They're not midgets, Donnie. They're elves. Why don't you shut up, Randy, or I'll make sure Janet from Accountant parks her cold sword covered lips under the mistletoe when you walk by. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. So go tell your little friends that if they can't get on board with the idea of Santa, they ought to move out of the country anyways. I mean, Santa's good people. He don't need this, man. And P.S., what's with your parents naming you after a state? I mean, Virginia ain't a bad name, but be careful. I think state names are bad luck anyways. I mean, look what happened to River Phoenix. I gotta go. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's a little, that's a little rough. <laughs> That's gold. That's why I love Donnie. Right, right. <laughs> he could get away with saying the most horrible things, mm -hmm. and and he's wrong. Obviously, right. there's no, you know, it's named after a state. You know, River Phoenix. Yeah, that's a state. That's no, a state. no, Donnie, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, he's confident. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, it's like one of our favorites, mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin. Oh well, yeah, East Wisconsin and Wisconsin. East Wisconsin and Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little shout out to our West, our, our Wisconsin fans mm -hmm. up there. They were wonderful in November. So much so that we actually got a lot of feedback about the Bits and Pieces podcast, which is kind of why I, I kind of like, hey, maybe we ought to do one. Yeah, we I were borderline that, accosted about, at, at, at about times, the podcast. <laughs> at yeah. times, yeah. Yeah, I think Olsman still is being slightly accosted. I love it. Accost <laughs> me. There was one woman that just heard like Jason's voice, and she's like, oh, I know that voice. Yeah. 
Was that the sisters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One girl drove in from uh, New York. She flew oh, wow. in. Oh, wow. Flew, flew in, in and they drove from their parents' house yes. to the show. How's that? But so, it was nice. It's like, she's like, she came in. She was going to come home or anyway for Thanksgiving, but she came in like almost an entire week early to come wow. to the show. To support her sister, support who's a big sister, fan. Yes. She's oh, to recognize your nice. Yeah. Whoa. I think they both were fans though, right? I think so, yeah. That's but, awesome. But it is funny to hear. I mean, you you three are on the air a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't know my voice. So when someone you've goes, I know your real voice. Listen. Yeah, yeah, you've got to yeah. you gotta love it. But that crowd was fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, in the morning, the two shows at night, in spite of that second show. Yes. I mean, that second show was... Uh, yeah. They were... Uh, it was a long day for our, for our people. Yes. Let's just say that. Yes. And, they, yeah. and Jeffy missed it. Sorry, I Jeffy. Know, we missed man, it. Dude, I... We missed In you. my head, that was going to be my highlight of my life. Yeah. I was going to kill it. Tom was going to see how amazing I was on stage, and mm. I was going to be offered my own radio show. <laughs> <laughs> and I missed out on it because of COVID. <laughs> Osmond and I would have enjoyed you at the roulette table That's as right. well. I mm. learned roulette, and I was amazing. Mm -hmm. Really? I might lose, but I was also winning. <laughs> so She was winning while losing <laughs> oh, really? the whole time. I ended up being up 24 hours. I think it was 3 a.m., and we were on the casino floor, and Jason's like, in good conscience, I cannot leave you down here. I can't leave by you yourself. Here. And I was like, yeah. no, 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 I'm no, doing no. so well. I'm still winning. I, don't know. I thought you yeah. were going to say you were up 24000 I thought you were oh, hell <laughs> no. I might have been Are up $24. <laughs> Willie at one point was up $800, as he informed me a few times. And yeah. then I won't follow up after that. But I did see him quite a few times on the floor after midnight as well. Really? I did not gamble at all while we were there. I just, I'm, I'm, I don't know how to do it. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it, it scares me a little bit. Well, we, um, she, I she wanted limit to, she, of like what I use. Yeah, but she wanted to learn roulette. And we had a yeah. really, we had a really great, uh, dealer, spinner, yes. or whatever you want to call them. The first time, the right? The first time. Right. Yeah. And I she learned a lot learning. of rules. Don't she touch learned, it. Don't yes, touch it. Don't touch this. She goes, well, he, he said, well, you can also put it here on this line and yeah. cover this line. And she's learning all these I was things. Like, I didn't know this. We There's were having corners. fun. And we were having uh, fun with our friends uh, that we met from Illinois. Darren were, and uh, Tori. Tori. Tori and Darren. And, and having a great time. And then this guy... Had to clock out. Mm. How many rounds do you think we did? Like 15, 12? Oh, easily 20. Yeah? Easily 20. I hit something every time. I could not lose. She was still w losing, well, if but you she was still winning. 40 bets yeah, that's and right. one of them hits, <laughs> you're still losing. I'll teach you about some sports betting here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> you will hit eventually. And it doesn't take much. However, what happened when the Ice Queen came back? Yeah. Oh, we had, had a new dealer. This new dealer came in and she was spinning quick. She was wiping the thing and she didn't care if one of Osmond's chips was leaning one way or another. Didn't clarify I was it. rushed and it was yeah. like, what's going on? Okay. Uh, and oh. threw him out there. So then I don't know the name of this listener, but all of a sudden he, he saw two spins. Yeah. And he sidled up beside well, me. Well, the first spin happened. I didn't hit anything. Right. And I go, what happened? Yeah. They're like, you lost. Yeah. Oh. Everything. Uh oh. Yeah. Not every. Not all of her money. Everything they had out everything there. Everything out there. Yeah. So then, second one, and then you could just tell there was something about this lady. Yeah. And this guy saddled up, sidled up to me. I right. guess. And he's oh, like, he was a sidler. <laughs> Damn it. And he, yeah, he's like, get out. <laughs> Literally. He's terrible. Because my chip, the like, one that was uh, on the line, like everyone knew, yeah, everyone there I knew. Know. And I kept acknowledging the cameras above me and talking to them because that's how I am. I'm always, you know, like, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to do that. I don't, I'm not touching the board. I'm sorry. Because yeah. they're worried about $20 maybe. Yeah, yeah, but right. whatever. And she's afraid, like, the the, the security the boss. Is, the yeah. floor boss is going to come out there and sweep her up. She put a dollar chip on this corner. But <laughs> really, she didn't because it's not touching the line. And we analyzed it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and, but is, that's yeah. a real thing, like an icer. Isn't that real? Like, they I, send I, I think so. the people. Yeah. She was the cooler. And yeah. then I bounced. Yeah. You know what sucks? So I felt bad because I don't want to be rude to the dealer and just leave right away. So I kept playing and I kept losing. And then eventually no, we called it. just go. Yeah. So then at the end of the night, after the, the two comedy shows, there weren't as many dealers out there and they did not have the live roulette table going. Right. So we played the one that's connected to the computers, but it's still, yeah. it, it, it's still an actual ball rolling. So she didn't have to deal with a dealer. That's, that's right. And we did that for like three hours. <laughs> It was very fun. I'm very good. Wow. Not really. It was a good time, though. It was that fun. is fun. I would love to learn something that I would like to play, you know, maybe. I really wish that uh, Ron, after we did the live shows, yeah, um, he would always be on the floor and, like, playing 
you know, some was it uh, not blackjack? I'm sorry. Yeah, blackjack. Yeah, probably blackjack. Probably. And I'd yeah. never seen him on the floor. It's like I would love to be able to like, hey, I yeah. want to play at your table. Yeah, but I probably would have messed it up. So yeah, yeah. I. Uh, but I would love to gamble with him. Yeah. 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 He he was a lot of fun after a show. Um, we would uh, thank God for him because I don't love anything more than chicken wings and um, a really sh bar steak. Like, that's just, and Ron was always down yeah, he, to find the hole in the wall place and yeah. just get some good slash bar food <laughs> and drink a couple beers and just like cut up. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I, if, if that is going to be one of the things I miss the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and in the future, if you're somewhere and you're like, I'm going to get me this, some real bad I'm going, sirloin. Yeah, I'm gonna, and I'm going to think of Ronnie the whole time. Well, yeah. that's the, so the other thing, one of our traditions too, and even with Chick and Christy, when we would travel together, is if there was a Chili's in the airport, we we were getting a bag of chips and a salsa, and we didn't share our bag of chips. Every every everybody gets their own bag, but we would be running late, to like from like making a connection. Not to make a Kenny Tarmac reference mm -hmm, too, but mm -hmm. yeah, one of us would run to the gate thinking that we were going to hold up the plane while the other one was Got getting chilies, <laughs> chips, and salsa to bring on the plane. Yes, oh my God. yes, and then like the like the chunkles we were where we put our we put the little table down and we're just like yeah let's go and oh. we devour and those chips are warm oh my gosh so I I've I've been in an airport twice since Ronnie passed and I have stopped for chips and salsa both oh. times. Yeah. Is the salsa that good or is it more the chips? I don't I it's it had to be honest not as good as I remembered but <laughs> when you're starving yeah. and it's that time yeah. of day and you're getting on a plane like it was just it was it just became a tradition more than anything. You know the chilies where I live. Yeah. I was a little upset. You know a lot of I don't know what it is with design of buildings lately but everybody's simplifying and like there's nothing there's no character there's no character there's there's some panera buildings that could just be an office building yeah just a little just lame anyway i noticed that the chilies on my they, they just painted it brown pretty simple and then the chili sign mm -hmm. the apostrophe was what it was a hot pepper yeah the red pepper it was a it's, chili it's now a green pepper huh yeah why yeah because I don't want any red or anything on the on the, oh, on the wall. Oh, because it's I don't not know. aesthetically pleasing. Maybe. I yeah. something, yeah. but I yeah. noticed it. I'm like, you're, why are you making it's it more still a boring? Chili, though. Yeah, but is it? Yeah, there's, there's a way green more chili. green chili. Yeah, green chilies is more of a chili. southwest thing. Isn't though. a red chili just a green chili that's overripe? I think Chili's is a southwest restaurant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, they're staying on brand. But it was red here. <laughs> and it stood out. It had some character. And, you know, I, honestly, if I did <laughs> see it. With all of you. you said it was on brown. Maybe that's why. Although where my uh, boo thing works, his logo was red. And where they built a store, they were not allowed to have uh, red on the building. Yeah. Everything had to be black and white. Yeah, because all ordinance in that area. Yeah. so stupid. And mm -hmm. then as soon as uh, those people that own that lot sold or whatever, new proprietors, whatever, they got a sign out front because because of that, they wouldn't even buy a sign out front. The owner was like, well, the hell with you. I'm not going to put the sign up because I want red. Anyway, yeah, they end up Pain getting ass. a big red sign as soon as they could. It's That's so weird. Just let people be who they want to be. Whatever color, whatever logo. Give them the red stop, pepper. Stop being boring. Yeah, I don't That's like it. That's my thing. I don't. Uh, I, I mean, architecture is like they. They. I don't know how you get the same degree today that you got oh, years ago. Anyone <laughs> could do these buildings, I know. right? Yes. Oh, yes. So lame. Jeff, your thoughts on architecture? <laughs> I, uh, I have none on that, but I was thinking about hanging out with Ron after shows, which yep. I didn't. I did not do much because I am a person. I don't hang out after shows because I don't like people. Mm -hmm. And the best part about working with Ron, I open for a lot of big, bigger names uh, because people are nice to me and they take me to open for them. And I've opened for Ron probably 150 times right. or more. And. Uh, most of the time, uh, you go up and you do your 30 minutes, and then you wait for an hour, hour and a half till they're done. Then you go walk back on stage, and you go, hey, thanks for coming out tonight. And then you get to go home. But with Ron, he would just be like, dude, you don't have to wait. 
And when he would come up on stage, he would palm me. We would shake hands, and he would hand me cash. And we would slide out, and I would be in my car before he was done saying, Hey, thanks for coming out tonight, you Aww. sons of a bitch, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. But before the show, we would hang out in the green room, and my girlfriend would just be amazed because Ron would go from one voice, depending on what you were talking about, he, you know, he would be in his normal voice. Then he's doing James Gandolfini. Now he's back to his normal voice. Now he's doing Donnie. Then he's doing Kenny. Then he's doing Rick. And just in his normal conversations. Mm -hmm. And to see all these amazing voices mm -hmm. come out of the same head mm -hmm. and the same mouth is just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And like he would, you know, he would go out to get a drink of water and Maggie would just be like, how does he do that? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, it drives me nuts, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, I've always been amazed at people who can do voices, but he did it so effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And each one of his characters was so different. Like, it, it, and he wasn't doing, and no offense to, like, Frank Caliendo, mm -hmm. he wasn't doing famous people. He was making up characters out of the blue mm -hmm. and having these great backstories and these great, you know, messing up, you know, lines for Donnie. But with Kenny, he would have his own, you know, kind of lingo. And then with... Uh, Floyd. Floyd. Oh my gosh, the lingo uh. there, and the and each character was so unique and individual, and mm -hmm. had so many different layers. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing what was coming out of that man's head. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I will ne I don't think I'll ever see it again in my lifetime. Yeah, the anyone. thing to to add to that point, the brilliance of him was he would find whatever. Let's say he was wanting to make fun of your hat. And he would think of a joke, whatever it was, real quick, mm -hmm. and then slide it right into one of his personality voices. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you didn't, and, you didn't even see it, it have it. Mm -hmm. right. You didn't see it. See it. How, how did that happen so quickly? And he would nail it. And I would be on the floor. Yeah. Every, I mean, I laughed mm -hmm. more before the show every time <laughs> I worked with him than any other comic I've ever worked with yeah. ever in 15, 20 years. I mean, yeah. just amazing how... And, and just laid back like most comics before mm -hmm. a show are a-holes they're nervous they don't want to talk and he would just Hi, be Godwin. so I, I was just gonna say. he would just be so <laughs> relaxed and just going in and out of voices and yeah. mm -hmm. and just i i would just be on the floor laughing yeah. before and what a great way to start the show as oh, a comic because yeah. Then you're already in a funny mood good and you're mood, coming yeah. out in a good mood because Ron just put you in one of yeah. the funniest Aww. moods ever by doing his characters. And yeah. it was so good. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things, we did a winery and I went up and did 15 minutes and then he came up and did floor like Floyd the trucker, mm -hmm. but he stood in the back of the room. He goes, you be like, oh, hey, is that Floyd in the back of the room? I'll come up. And he did a few jokes. So he did turtles and whores. Mm -hmm. And then I went back up and did 20 minutes, and then he came back out as Donnie and did an hour. Wow. So after the show, we're standing there, and he's signing autographs, and I'm taking pictures for him uh, because no <laughs> one wants to talk to me. And, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, why don't you come over here and take pictures? I got you. Uh, yeah. But these two girls came up, and they go, hey, we want to we wanna meet Floyd. Mm -hmm. And I go, uh, yeah, I, that's not going to happen. And they're like, no, we are huge like, go backstage and tell Floyd that there are two <laughs> girls here who want to party. And I and Ron's standing a foot away from me, and they have no idea the same character who did mm -hmm. Floyd does Donnie. And they, they were begging... We'll do anything for you if you let us meet Floyd. <laughs> and I literally, I walked to the door and I looked outside and I go, oh, I don't see a semi here. He must have left. And they go, oh, he missed out. Yeah. And oh, just man. had no clue. Smart on you, yeah, though. Was it was amazing, though, that these people were at the show. Mm -hmm. They talked, they saw Floyd five feet away from him and saw Donnie five feet away and had no idea it was the same person. Yeah, I think That's that happened a lot. That's how good he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that happened a lot with Donnie. Like that one... I remember the the that evolution of Ron going. I can't I can't not talk as Donnie after a show. I can't be at a signing table and go in and out from Ron and Donnie. These people don't want to talk to Ron. No, yeah. they want to yeah, talk right. to Donnie. And him finally just staying married to the character the entire time he was signing. Mm -hmm. And after that, but to what you said, like his his brain 
went at a speed that I don't think that I'll ever understand. The yeah. creativity and the things that he produced in 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 such a short amount of time or on the fly, like that was just it was it was wild. And what was so funny when you said about like if he were gonna make fun of your hat, this is what he would do. Yeah. And that's how as as Ronnie would say, busting bowls. Yeah. He would do that, but he couldn't do it as Ron because he was too nice of a guy. Right. So he would dip into a character <laughs> yeah. and bust yeah. your balls, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just, uh, I just, I, I, then, and I don't, I miss, and it's weird to say character, but I, I, I miss him and all of his uniqueness. Yeah. He, it, Ron was Ron, as you said, and he was a nice, sweet guy, but his, his spices of, of him all that of was it. still him yeah. were those characters. Yeah. yeah. So can I tell a quick story? I don't Please. know if I've told this before and it's kind of about, uh, Ron in and out of his character, but I took my dad to see a comedy show. It was the Bob and Tom. I, well, Floyd was there. It was very exciting. April Macy, I think, um, and they were trying to do something, I think, for um, Fox. Um, yeah, I, I remember that. Um, I don't remember what it was, it was called. It was, it was at yeah. Crackers and Broadway. Anyway, I yeah. bring my dad. And my dad got to meet Christy Lee. And he's like, oh, you're freaking out. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is like yeah. when I first started working at the station. I would always talk to Ron because he would come out. I worked at the lobby, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But when I get to, you know, Donnie in the line and I introduce my dad. I'm like, hey dad, this is Ron. And he drops a character, he goes, Hi, Mr. Olsman, nice to meet you. You know, we love working with Jessica. She's so great, blah, blah, blah. And my dad goes, Oh, you don't have to drop the act for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like mortified immediately, but without missing a beat, Ron goes, Oh man, we love Jessica. She likes to get up on that front desk and shake her ass like a <laughs> Motley Crue video. <laughs> it's bad. Time. And my dad was just like, "Yay! <laughs> they fight on my daughter. This is amazing." Because right. I grew up listening. My dad always listened, so he wanted Donnie. He kind of wanted the Donnie yeah. Baker experience. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I'm mortified and embarrassed when it happened. But Ron didn't yeah. miss a beat, and he and he didn't care. He's like, "Oh no, blah blah right. blah. It's part yeah. of it." And I was just like, "Oh thank God." That yeah. Worked out. That's yeah. Awesome. That was wonderful. That, that's Ron. He, he gave you what you wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super generous. Yeah. 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 Loved his fans. Yeah. Very much. Oh, man. There were times after shows, hour, two hours, yeah. three hours. He was out there. So he's standing yep. there talking to people, taking pictures, signing. Yeah. I mean, just loved his fans yeah. and appreciated and understood that what they did for him in his life, and he gave it back to them 100%. Yeah. And he... I never once saw him cut someone off who was r rambling. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, next. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, no, it's good. Like, and, you know, we yeah. talked to him for 15 minutes with 300 people still yeah. in line. Yeah. And you're like, no, you're being too nice, dude. You yeah. got to move this along. But And he would stay till every last person. Mm -hmm. And then... The staff, wherever wanted, yep. you know, would come up and want pictures mm -hmm. and to talk. And he would sit there and talk for hours after shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going home. I don't want to talk to any of <laughs> yeah. you. And he, but he would stay. He would yeah. do it. And I always respected that about him. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of phones out there with a lot of Donnie Baker pictures. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first time uh, I ever got to sign breasts no. as a comedian was opening for Donnie Baker. Yeah. I would get, I, and that was like a big deal for me. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you would have saw the way I did it, I could not have held the pen more further away from the, br I just kind of like zaroed it because I was, I was so say, uncomfortable. You're, you're the most polite guy. So the oh. fact that you even attempted that. I was yes. very embarrassed. How? But at the same time, I was like, oh, I'm a rock star. I yeah, get to sign no. a breast. Yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. What were they like? Were they... Uh... I, I didn't look. I, I looked away. <laughs> Left or right? I, I modestly... Excuse me, ma'am. No, that one show, I, I had like five different breasts I got wow, to sign. Wow, really? It was, yeah, it was crazy. I kind of feel like if someone's offering that up, you almost need to like grab one to kind of firm well, it that's up. that's how you other know? people do it. But yeah. I don't, I'm... Yeah. Terrified. If you're, yeah. I, was gonna, if, I mean, if you're terrified of breasts and lawsuits, yeah. I, yeah. No, I seriously, I could not have held the pen further yeah. away. Just. <laughs> no, no, no. That happened in Bowler. Some boyfriend offered his girlfriend's boobs for me to sign, and I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, no. that's always weird. I, yeah. I will say this, and uh, it's a true story, and I don't care. Uh, after the show with Ron one time, this guy came up, and he goes, uh, Man, my daughter uh, can 
Can you uh, can you get a, can she get a picture with you? And she was of age, yeah, uh, but barely. And, uh, right. and yeah, yeah. And uh, and his daughter turns completely around and, and like bends over, looking <gasps> over her shoulder. Like in front of him, like the you know oh. doggy style motion. He goes, "Yeah, that's a good one. Get that picture." <laughs> oh, <laughs> and Rob just looks at me, and we both just roll our eyes. <laughs> Next, yeah. <laughs> wow. Come on, oh, get yeah. in there, sissy. It's gonna be on the Christmas card. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably exactly. Yes. It's probably on this year's Christmas card. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Uh, All right, let's play another bit here. We have um, favorite Christmas memories, so we can go from favorite gig memories to favorite Christmas Christmas memories from uh, from Donnie Baker himself. Here we go. Hi, Bob and Tom. It's Donnie Baker, man. Hey, Donnie. I, maybe I'm getting a little softer as I get older, but Christmas time <laughs> gets me a little misty-eyed more and more each year. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, it does. And the other night, I come home. My mom Phyllis is watching that one Christmas movie. Um, oh, the sounds of music. Well, I didn't watch all of it. I just walked in during that part when Martha Stewart was singing about her favorite things. <laughs> so I figured, why not reminisce about a few of my favorite things? Mm -hmm. All right, Boner, get the keyboard. Jingle them ivories. <laughs> Man, every Christmas reminds me of the good times. And there's certain smells and sounds I remember every time I do something Christmassy, mm -hmm. like drinking eggnog. Man, I can't drink eggnog without remembering that feeling I got holding back your hair while you puke. <laughs> and I'm talking to you, Patty. Sure, I could do it back then, but now you've gained so much weight, there wouldn't be enough room for the both of us in that porta potty. I swear to God, that's true. Man, lots of things get to me. Like the soft glow of the police lights flickering off the icicles as they arrest my best friend for flipping off an undercover cop. Ooh. And I agree with you, Scotty. If they were undercover, then how'd they see it anyways? <laughs> That's entrapment, and I'd say it right to their face. How can they prove you weren't flipping off the no parking sign behind them? Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> Or the feeling I used to get every time I walked into Hooters with a new puppy. Uh. I swear to God it worked. Every waitress in a bar would smother me, man. I'd be surrounded, uh. half of them wanting to hold the puppy, the other half wanting to hold the pork. Uh. Now, for two years, my nickname in Hooters was Pound Puppy. I swear to God it was. You can look it up. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that's where they got the name for them stuffed animals anyways. Oh, yeah? Man, Hooters was a great place to raise a pet. They got a million <laughs> leftover chicken wing bones, plenty of paper tiles. But I'll admit, man, sometimes it was hard for them little Dobermans to drink water out of a pitcher. Uh -huh. But there's something about a crisp <laughs> chill in the air that brings back the memories of Christmas time. Like seeing your breath when you fart. <laughs> and I can do it because I'm triple jointed in my neck. I swear to God that's true. That comes in handy when you're trying on a new pair of jeans. Uh -huh. Or scraping off your windshield on a cold winter morn with a Clay Aiken CD. And for your information, that's the only thing it's good for, Randy. And I'd say it right to your face. <laughs> or reaching in the glove box uh -huh. and wiping the frost off a of fresh rubber. And what bites my ass is I shouldn't have to thaw them out, Angel. That's your job. But I think the best feeling of every holiday season is getting that phone call on Christmas morning. You know, the phone call from someone you ain't heard from in a while. Mm -hmm. And hearing them three magical words that really bring the Christmas season together. Yeah. It ain't yours. <laughs> I swear to God it ain't. So Merry Christmas, man. I gotta get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't be Donnie Baker if he didn't have a uh, pregnancy test around Christmas, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I just love the way it says pound puppy. Oh, pound puppy. <laughs> pound puppy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, think of all the phrases he started. State law, swear to God. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know we have all say I swear to God. but He, he made him famous. He mm -hmm. made yeah. swear to God and yeah. state law. Say like, it right to your face. I, I've heard, yeah. oh, yeah, say it right to your face. I've heard people who have no idea mm -hmm. who he is say state law. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like it's yeah. in the common lexicon now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so funny to me. Yeah. I wonder when he first did that. Very early on. Which you, album is that? Um, I don't know. I did eight of them of oh. his. So it was an early but one. But before though. the state law album? The very first album was Boat for Sale. Right. I know that one because it had a gold cover. And uh, and tell me that you every time you see a boat for sale on oh, the side of the road, you sure. don't think mm -hmm. it wrong. A, yeah. a every real time. crappy boat. Oh, yeah. Yes, well, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 He goes, well, where I'm from, they're all crappy. <laughs> <laughs> I posted a I posted my boat for sale 
and got so many um swear so, to gods yeah no. so many that i was just like i'm i'm taking it down <laughs> <laughs> i just i get that you're trying to make the joke but like some of them went like and not to be serious but for a split second like i know that he was a character to a lot of you guys but he was very much our friend right and so when people try to make the joke I just have gone straight for the straight for the truth and say, mm. you guys, Ron was my friend and he died and mm -hmm. I am still mourning him. And if you could just chill out a little bit, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. And most of the time, people are fine. Other times, people block me and say, you know, so yeah. whatever. But yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I get that he was a part of our daily lives, but it's it's a little more intense for those of us still. I mean, like, five months is not long. No. Mm -hmm. And not to be insensitive, but what kind of boat do you have? <laughs> <laughs> not anything that Donnie could ever afford. Um, which means Jeff can't afford it either. <laughs> I, what did he, what, the Steven Seagal, like when Steve, like my, oh, my yeah. mom yes. freaking loved Steven Seagal, it was in her top five mm -hmm. guys to want a bone, right? So when this started <laughs> becoming like a thing, well, you know what? And I guarantee, not to be, my mom can now tell Ron that. So. Yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, yes. I'm sure he's doing it for, you right, know, right, right. on the cloud and having Hi, so, baby, I'll do you. Oh, I guarantee my mom is just like, yes, again, just like my dad, make me, make me laugh. Um, but no, the Steven Seagal thing was so funny. Like we would do that all the time. Uh, Gosh, I don't know. I keep wanting to say high school. It might have been too early. It might not have been, but it's when he became a cop, right? He did there a was reality a show, show. There was a reality show. Oh. And it was like Lawman or whatever. And that was it was the same gag every time he called. It was so funny every yeah. single time. And then our buddy uh. our buddy Matt would be man on the street mm -hmm. and go, you know, what's up, Stallone? You know, Stallone. And, uh, <laughs> Stallone and just like, piss him oh, off. Oh, Chinese so stars or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. that was just the greatest thing ever for my family because it would just become one of those things we'd always say, like, mm -hmm. hey man, I'm Steven Seagal. I'm Steven I remember living in the movies. Oh god. I'm law man. <laughs> That's what he usually would end the call with is lawman. But he he has to make. I used to what? I'd be a lawman. Then I'm, now I'm actually doing this. He's like whatever the news story was. Now I'm actually a garbage man or something. I can't. <laughs> I'm not funny like that. I can't write that genius. But it was always so funny. Well, who's the guy that was? He acted like a lawman. He had the really. He was older. Had the, the Doug, yellowish the bounty hunter. Yes. Did he yeah. ever do an impression of him, or, or did he just talk about him? He probably just talked talk about, about him. I could see where Ron would really like that okay. TV show. Yeah. Or his wife. Yeah. 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 yeah, whatever her name was. Maybe he referred to them at, at a time when they were on the TV a lot. I bet. Yeah. Mm. That yeah. might have been, that was probably the same time. Probably was. Everyone was yeah. doing yeah. their shows, different networks. Yeah. Coming up with a different angle. Coach Ralph Fontaine. Oh, my God. That was, God. That I mean, was yeah. And that's a more recent yeah. one, but I mean. Oh, is that gosh. the Tech and E? Yeah. 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 Man, another funny, uh, yeah. you know, just common thing. Um, that, and just now. all those things that you heard as kids. Like, I don't think kids today hear those kinds of things when they're being coached, <laughs> but I know we did. Yeah. Well, but even to add one to it that became a part of it that... I, we never heard, but you kind of related. Give me two Chick McGee's, a Jess yes, Hooker, yes, and, yeah, and, yeah, and a yeah. Jeff Hall, And I'll win you a semi. I mean, yeah, yes. who's ever said that? <laughs> but it became such a part of it. Yeah. So funny. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So good. I just... Mm. I love it. By the way, if you're wanting to hear some more of older um, Ron pieces, uh, the Bits and Pieces podcast number 42, we did a tribute with Tim Wilson. Mm -hmm. So it's not any Donnie Baker, Kenny Floyd stuff, yeah. uh, but Ron was so close to Tim. Uh, we had him in and we played some Tim bits and talked about, Tim. he had some great Tim stories. Uh, so that's Bits and Pieces number 42. If you want some, if you still, uh, if you haven't gone back and listened to that one, as well as... Christy Lee did an interview when she had a little podcast called Uninterrupted. Um, she did one with Ron, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. I mean, they kind of get into some nitty gritty of, of what he does and what, you know, and how he does it. Yeah. Because um, Christy was a little more of a um, straight and, and wonderfully serious podcast, but not sure. not too serious that it was like oh. wasn't entertaining. It was very. It was great. It was great. I listened to it over the summer, late yeah. summer. Um, just because I needed it, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, it, but those are a couple things out there um, that you might enjoy. And Ron did a great Tim Wilson impression. Oh. He did. <laughs> I, I still to this day do Ron, doing, doing Ron, Ron doing, doing Tim. Tim. Yes. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, I just, yeah. Yeah, that was um, after, when we would travel and after uh, Tim died, uh, I would, I could be like spazzing out backstage and Ronnie would say, Jesse, the same way that Jesse? Tim would say it. Mm -hmm. And he would like, it was almost like my, my, uh, calm down 
yeah. you know, like, hey, like, <laughs> bring it in. And, um, yeah, just, I spent so much time for, like, a like at a very intense few years, I spent so much time with Tim and Ron. Mm-hmm. Because they were the ones that were on the shows every weekend with me. And then it would be Chick and Christy that would rotate as hosts. And so it was the three of us. I just can't believe they're gone. Yeah. Those are some solid deep roots you had with them. And traveling with people, man, I mean, that <laughs> you're, you're going to get close to game. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to get real close to people. You're either going to kill them or you're going to love them even more. I yeah. saw Ron almost jump across a gas station counter and punch out a guy <laughs> because we couldn't find the directions to the right airport. And I think we were in Detroit and we didn't even, Ron's like, I didn't even know Detroit had two airports. Like, it was the, it was the most angry I've ever seen. He was so angry. It was, it, and there was a language barrier and there was just... It was it was five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Only time I ever saw Ron just completely lose it as Ron. Did he slide into Tony Soprano though? Probably. Do no, it was it was one of those moments where we just got in the car and rode in complete silence to oh, the wow. airport. Yeah, it okay. was a, it was an intense. But it was like I don't think we'd slept for forty eight hours. Like it was one of those where there was just it was intense. And and then but going back. When we get on the plane and we're calmed down and we just start laughing hysterically, repeating the crazy shit that he said. Like, <laughs> was, While you snacked on your chili's chips. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Gosh. And I'm guessing at some point Tim Wilson said, Ronnie, I thought you were going to kill that man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and, oh, oh, gosh. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was funny. His Tony Soprano was, is the best That's of, my any, of any, what, any mm. Tony Soprano I've ever heard. And every time I hear Tony Soprano, I just want to say, and on my mother's birthday. Yeah. Like, every time. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Just, yeah. He would hit those. Yeah. One, he would find the thing. Yeah, and just like no one else could. Yeah, it was great. They did. He did a. Um, I say they because it's two of his characters. Um, the belly up with, uh, oh, with James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano, and uh, Charles. Uh, Charles Barkley. I mean, he did so like good. he did like fifty of these. So good. And a lot of it was just. Tony eating and getting pissed off at a candy bar. Just... And that mismatch. Like, yes. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I will, that album I do next year will definitely have some of those on there. Oh, it has I prom- to. I promise yeah. you. Sure. Will you put Dr. Phil on there? Yes. Oh, definitely. I, gosh, I love Dr. Dr. Phil. Phil. Dr. Another Phil. Another thing. It ain't about you. Yeah. Have, you, have, you have you read my books? <laughs> have, you, have you seen my tapes? <laughs> well, the, it's the only time I ever liked that guy. That's <laughs> when Ron was doing an impression. I, I love that eventually. It's not about you. <laughs> Because <laughs> Bob Cavoyan truly hated Dr. Yeah. Phil. He just like he just didn't get him and just was annoying, whatever. And then once Ron started calling as Dr. Phil frequently and he kept saying those same things, Bob started replying. Yeah. Have you have you have you read my books? No. Have you already seen my tape? No. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept... That's so funny. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to go, Bob, Bob, no, it's it, it's Ron. It's not really Dr. Phil. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. He captured him pretty well though. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean just cause you can and then he would just have the most off the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he ever do any girl voices? I know that sounds random, but just thinking, like, I feel like at one point there might have been a one-off where he did call in as as somebody, but I don't think he did. I asked him once if he, actually, in Cincinnati this year when I was talking to him, I was like, have you ever thought about doing, you know, Donnie Baker's mom, do Phyllis Baker? Mm. Like, maybe it's the Mother's Day, something like yeah. that. And he's like, I never thought about that, but that'd be kind of interesting. Oh, man. I totally forgot about it. So, was Phyllis his mom or his stepmom? His stepmom. stepmom. Okay. We never, yeah. we never heard about the there real mom. There was some odd sexual tension there, so I think there's <laughs> definitely a stepmom. I'm glad you brought up Cincy because I was thinking about Louisville the year before, which mm-hmm. he uh, he and the Port Pistols were there. Mm-hmm. And I was going to mention that his last album that I did, I believe it was called Unmasked, had a few songs, and they're, they're parody songs, um, but working for minimum wage, Scotty Pippen face, um, something about um, 
uh, some white boys, something. Anyway. Uh, the working for minimum wage uh, video yeah. uh, has a cameo from yours truly. Yes, oh, okay. it does. So, uh, and, and, oh, and from you, too. Uh, We're both in it. Just barely, yes. You're great. I'm in barely it. in it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he, he was really proud of that album, and not necessarily because of the phone calls or anything, but those songs he worked on. Um, with his with his buddy um, Scotty Winkler in in quotes uh, wrote a, helped write the the music for that. But he he when we were working on that, he's like, man, Jason, these songs are so great. These are the best ones I've written. Yeah. And then I got them to put on the album, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they were. And they didn't really get played on the air, fine, whatever. But he got to play them live at Louisville. So I don't know if that stream is out there. Yeah. Um, but that's worth it going is. back and watching those. Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistol songs. Um, oh, yeah. He did a one-off about a Kia, by the way, at that one as well. Um, getting his Kia keyed. Um, <laughs> Based on true events. Yeah, so much, so much true events. Um, but there's some great songs on there. There's one that's not for air um, that's probably worth it, too. It's a little, yeah. Anyway. Um, Drew just informed me that he kind of did a Caitlyn Jenner voice. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> And on that note. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if we'll do another one next year. Uh, maybe next Christmas. Who well, knows? Maybe we just hit the high notes here in Indianapolis. The race and Christmas. Right, right. Yeah. But no, we have a, you know, the, the show itself is, should be on the road a little more this year. Coming yeah. up in 2024. So we've been told. Yeah, look No for details us. from this guy. <gasps> uh, maybe we could do a, pod, a live podcast after the broadcast. Oh, my gosh. People love that. Right? You guys in? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's just go back to Wisconsin. I, everyone would show right back up. <laughs> I was like, say, oh, we're we doing this again. We could drive up there like again. once a month. Yeah, <laughs> and you all can be on it. Yeah. We'll bring bring your own microphone. <laughs> it would help. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're gonna need a lot more microphones. And a USB -C. And and Eddie, how board. many microphones we got? Yeah, yeah. we're gonna need some more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, um, thank you for joining us, Jess. Thank you for your heartfelt uh, thoughts on Ronnie. Uh, Jess, great stories. Jeff, thanks for, for joining us. <laughs> it's been, uh, you had some great experiences with Ron. We all did, and we all kind of have different angles. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have the same experience of how great and wonderful uh, a friend he was, how great of a talent he was, and uh, uh, obviously we all miss him. Yeah, so. greatly. Greatly. Yeah. So, uh, um, but um, w as long as we work here, we're going to do our best to, to not uh, let any of this stuff go to waste. You mm -hmm. know, we have plenty of stuff uh, in the archives, if you will. So, um, Ronnie, we miss you, and um, we'll be back next time, hopefully uh, in 2024. Cool. All right, we're ready for no lights. No lights and action. <laughs> Cinematic history. Cool. Let's do that one more time, and then I'll get some close-ups. Ready? Ready. Oh, Mr. Soprano, you're driving down the road, and a song comes on. You turn it off immediately. What song was it? Oh, shit. I, um, give me a second on this one. I, All right. Uh, something annoying. Well, I think there's got to be a song that just piss, um, that that's repetitive and annoying. What was, is it? Baby Shark, but... Baby shock. Uh, hey, Mr. Soprano, a song comes on and you turn it off immediately. Oh, the, uh, the baby shock. I mean, it's over and over and over. It repeats itself. Creates road rage. Jesus. A conspiracy theory that might be true. Um, I don't believe dinosaurs ever here. Ta look at the pterodactyl. I mean, if, if you could fly with leather wings, every hairband would have lost their lead singer during migration. What? <laughs> It's an old joke I used to do. <laughs> um, now, so here's a question. Do you want to acknowledge the camera at all at any, any point in this video? Um, I don't think so. Okay, yeah. cool. I don't want to acknowledge the camera. It's, it's the camera <laughs> the rock wrestler. Rock. Something in Atlanta. Yeah, rock. Got the rock, rock of Gibraltar. What, what is it again? That's right. Yeah. Gibraltar. Gibraltar, that's right. Yeah, that's fine. That's good, though. That's, that's perfect. 
Hey man, this is Donnie Baker. When I travel through Georgia, I make sure I go to my favorite part of the state, Savannah's. You think about it, the rocks from here, the rock of Gibraltar's, and the rock of ages. And the fact remains of all the landmarks here in Savannah, my favorite hits my ears, and I listen to it every day. The rock of Savannah, and I just forgot the damn call letters. State law. I-95. I-95, shit. Okay, I-95. Hey, Mr. Soprano, can you do an impression of someone famous? Oh yeah, the uh, little prick from Fantasy Island. The plane, the plane. <laughs> there it is. That's good. <clears throat> <laughs> the little prick. <laughs> it's so obscure, but. Uh, oh, that's perfect. I had to do that's something right that I could go up higher. Mouth. That's right, Michael. Mm. Yeah. Caliendo said something when I rush my Tony or go high, it sounds Asian. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. <laughs> Hey, Donnie, if you wore a warning label, what would it say? Donnie Baker, the bastard maker. I'll put a baby in you. My favorite part of the United States right here in the Ocean Cities. There's so much to see and do, and you may not have the salt life, because if you're like me, you're diabetic. <laughs> uh, I'll do it here. <laughs> uh, hey, Mr. Soprano, what's the worst job you ever had? Probably been in your mom over. Jesus. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Donnie, can you do an impression of someone famous? Uh, man, I used to do a bunch of them. I used to do uh, Crocodile Hunter. I could do him. I could do him. I could do um, a pretty good Fred Sanford's. I could do my cousin, but then our aunt called us. It's <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> great. That was great, man. Cool.